Hey everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's been a glorious late March morning here today. Beautiful sun. Typically, as soon as I press record, it's gone behind a cloud. So you'll just have to imagine it and hopefully it comes back very soon. As you can probably tell from my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather today. So instead of the plan video that I had, that's gonna be delayed until later in spring, we're going to do some planting. And not just any planting, my Easter treat from my lovely wife has been a morning in the garden and I've been able to progress to one of my two spring projects. So today I want to give a bit of a sneak peek of that and we're also going to enjoy some exciting evergreen planting. Some of the plants that have been growing on for quite a while now are going to find their forever homes in an area that I'll be seeing pretty much every day from the windows in the house. So it really is an important bit of planting. I hope you enjoy it. We're currently then at the end of the garden closest to the house, about 15 metres from the house. And this is the usual area where I begin my garden tours. That's the small budget tropical border that I planted up a few years ago now. And that's where I generally begin my walks around the garden. This area here is a complete and utter builder's yard mess. All the claggy subsoil I've dug up from my fire pit is there, ready to be collected probably next year. And I've got all kinds of different recycling, mess, composting, everything on the go. But the exciting new area is here. Now, I can't give you a full view, and nothing's 100% definite yet. I've got my polytunnel right here, my temporary polytunnel, which will be coming down hopefully very soon. And I want to tell you a little bit more about my plans for this area. So in a few weeks time, you'll be seeing a new video series starting in which I continue the fire pit and also build an archway over this part of the garden here. There's gonna be some trellising, some black trellising and potentially a clematis climbing over it, which will really look fantastic. But the area you're gonna look at today is this area here. Now, this has been a collection really of my gardening time that you haven't seen, that I haven't shared with you yet. In the middle, we've got a giant boulder. Now, that is one of the group of boulders that I actually got here when we moved house about a week after. I moved them all here. That one is an absolute monster. It's granite and it weighs, I won't say it weighs a ton, obviously, probably about a third of a ton. It really is a monster. And there was one early January day when I made it my mission to move it from there, where it's been for the last, well, three and a half years, over to there. And it took a few hours, but with some real effort and sweat, I got it there. The wall behind it, well, I'll share with you this side of it today. It's essentially a lot of the stone that I had left over from my garden borders, and I created a kind of dry stone wall effect, which I think by the time I get the trellising above it, really will suit the style of this planting, and also continue the theme of York stone and real weathered stone that I've got going through the garden right now. So this area, I'm gonna see it from the house every day. Well, when the polytunnel's not there, that is. So I really wanted to prioritize evergreen planting. Yes, I actually do that myself. It's not just something I spout off my videos. I think if you want to see a party garden every single day, it really is great to know that even in the depths of winter, you'll be seeing lush greens, glossy leaves, and a vibrant overall display. So although I might work some summer planting into here, the bulk of the planting really is evergreen. So let's start and look at the plants in more detail. Look at that, the sun's made an appearance. Fantastic. So I apologize if today's video isn't quite as professional as I usually aim for, but let's look at the plants. So the first three plants I positioned in this border here, I wanted to position them before I started recording. So today's video is pretty much a bonus one. But on this side here, we've got a Trachycarpus princeps hybrid. Now, if you're planting a border, I highly recommend position the tall structural plants first. Those are the key plants, the ones you don't want to move, and the ones which others are simply gonna wrap around as they grow more. So the Trachycarpus for me, they are a key plant in this area. They're the ones that's gonna grow the tallest and the ones that are gonna give the most impact. So I've gone for a trio. One there, one there, and one there. Now I should say I had two different choices for this area. I was gonna either have some waggies that I've been growing on in pots for a good few years now, or these Trachycarpus princeps. But in all honesty, they're both beautiful palms. The thing that swung it for me is really just how much I value having my other princeps hybrids in the garden. I enjoy seeing them in winter when the beautiful silvery white on the sides of the leaves look just incredible with the frost. I think they look fantastic all the way through the year. And they're also quite big palms as well. So these palms here will eventually be touching. So I quite like the idea that although waggies are very beautiful, attractive palms, whatever the weather, for me, these really lush, glorious leaves 
I think they'll give that tropical vibe straight away. And like I said, I can't give you a full picture of this area really, <laughs> it's in context, but I want to show you just what my plans are. Once I position the palms, I space them out nicely. I imagine that I'm gonna be looking at this area from this way on, basically behind me now. So they're a nice visual even spacing. Hopefully I'll be happy with them there. I then moved on to the next level of plants, which I guess you might call the sort of mid-level planting. Heavily influenced by Simon Mabry's amazing Leeds Jungle Garden. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. We've got my Mahonia Sweet Winter. And really, in this beautiful spring sun, that sheen on the leaves really does tell you the full story. An absolutely beautiful plant. I believe they'll get to a metre, maybe a metre and a half tall. So for me, these plants, as they grow and develop, the palms will rise up way above them, and these will create a beautiful mid-layer to really give some depth, variety, and real volume to the planting. So I've gone for one there in that corner. I haven't positioned it right in the corner there because I will be planting a Clematis armandii there to grow up over my planned trellis in. But that one's gone there. And then this one here growing against that rock which took so much effort to move there you probably see there the fruits or berries beautiful sort of glaucous blue color a fantastic plant you've got the leaves the berries and also those bright zingy yellow flowers as well so really if you want an evergreen plant with impacted interest through the year you're not going to go wrong with a mahonia sweet winter and i'm also a fan of soft caress as well a plant i've got repeated through the garden then on the subject of repetition, these plants here, not tropical in the slightest, but evergreen and with beautiful winter scent. Yes, these are my Sacococca sweet box. Those beautiful plants I showed you in a video last month, fantastic evergreens, and the scent in late winter really is incredible. So that's why I'm prioritizing them here, close to the house. So when I'm outside during those winter days, probably filming videos for you a lot, I can enjoy that beautiful scent. And there's another one over there. Now these are suckering, so they will spread slightly, but in the context of this border, that isn't a problem. And then just show you a couple more plants. Again, this is one that was mentioned in Simon Mabry's jungle visit video. This is a plant I actually very nearly bought at Chelsea Flower Show last year, my first visit there, but somebody in front of me bought our 12. This is Epimedium Spine Tingler. I got this one from eBay recently. Gotta say, beautiful little plant. You can probably see there the new growth is bright vivid red and again it's not a plant you'd immediately think of as tropical or exotic but it's an evergreen and i think it's one of those really handy sort of ground cover type plants something that's going to cover a lot of the soil because let's face it whether it's summer or winter you don't want to see bare soil and that's why plants like this really are fantastic and on the same note we've got fascicularia bicolor bromeliad you know how much i really enjoy growing these plants in summer, you've got the beautiful red bracts that appear. The inflorescences are bright blue. It really is such an unusual alien sort of plant, really. But for the rest of the year, it kind of looks like a spiky grass from a distance. But I suppose the main reason I've grown this plant here is because it's very, very tough, very adaptable. But as it's close to what will eventually be our lawn, it's a very, very tough plant that will cope with balls, toys, water fights, whatever gets thrown at it, it'll do just fine. So that is the general theme for the border. Hardy, tough evergreens. If you want to buy any of these, Fasicularia, you can get them at Vertigo near York. You can buy them from a few different places online. And also Linden Nurseries near me, they've got them in stock. The palms, these Trachycarpus princeps new form hybrids, they came from Hardy Palms. I'm not sure if they've got stocking currently, but knowing Nigel, I'm sure I'll have them very soon. I mean, just look at that there. Even a small plant in this beautiful light, just it just looks incredible. And they only get better and better as they grow up. A very fast growing palm, probably the fastest growing palm I've got over the Nova. So I'm excited to see those develop. The Sakoka, those were from Brigand Center, I think. And Sweet Winter, I got those from Craig over at Grow Paradise. So that's my planting for this area here. I think I positioned them out given each plant enough space. Like I said, there might be some smaller plants going in the middle, but that is the rough idea for this area. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll tell you a bit more about why I put this border together like this. As I crouch down in this side then, look over there, you'll see I've got a mirrored stone wall. 
maybe not built to quite the same construction standards, but by the time I get my archway put up in the middle there, this stone here will nicely tie the whole garden together. And like I said, I've tried to use this old York stone throughout the garden. I hunted a lot of it down before we moved in. So when we moved in, it wasn't just 10 to 15, you know, full van full loads of plants. It was also about six ton of cobbles and probably about 10 ton of York stone as well. I definitely got my money's worth out of that delivery van. <laughs> I had it for a full week and completely abused it. But obviously looked after it and there wasn't any damage, just for legal reasons. So the general theme is keep that stone running through the back there. I've used it as a sort of edging all the way through the garden. I had a few nice lumps left and that's why these have gone in here. So although it's not perfect, it's not pristine, it certainly ties in with my theme and also that sort of loose, rough jungle vibe. There is at the back of the wall essentially a double wall made up of sleepers, but I'll share with you my plans and plans to the other side of that very soon. So really what I wanted this area here is something I'm going to look out at and enjoy some evergreen structure. Obviously the palms, they won't be hanging around here very long. Soon they'll be right up there. They'll be tall palms and realistically they'll get to maybe seven, eight foot within five years. They grow pretty quickly, at least if I give them enough care and plenty of summer water they will. That's the plan for those. You might notice that I haven't got the border leveled out right. And this is something that I've always done instinctively and I think it can really improve borders. Why do people insist on having every single border, every part of the garden completely flat? For me, having some level changes really does change the whole feel of the area. Yes, my Mediterranean planting that's raised up from a functional point of view to give the plants better drainage and a nice warm start to spring. But here, the raising up of the back of the border, the slight gradient changes as you go down as I hit that fence behind me, it's pretty much a visual thing. So you see the plants presented in front of you. But just looking down here, I'm already liking this beautiful selection of greens, the different forms, the different leaf shapes. It really does look fantastic. So like I said, I positioned these plants before I started filming. And that's because I wanted to give it my full attention, not mess around doing it on video and make compromises. But if you are planning out a similar border to this, a few tips I'd say, start with the big plants first. That really is critical. You can soon move a lot of these smaller plants around, but you want the big plants in, and ultimately those are gonna be the main structure here in summer, autumn, winter, and spring. So you really want to prioritize those first. Secondly, I would say get all the plants or at least most of the key players together and plan it out at roughly the same time. So you know what's going in. So I know there the clematis are going in there, but every other plant I've got it in place. I haven't started with a few plants over here and then over the course of spring, just continually evolve it. Although that's absolutely fine, you can end up with a border which looks a bit of a mishmash of plants. You haven't given plants the right room, the right space in. So I'd really recommend if you're doing a full border, get most of the key plants together at the same time. And I think the third thing is, this is probably a tip that's helped me over time and something that whenever I made a mistake in the garden, it's usually the reason. Imagine what the plants will look like in five years time. A lot of the plants that us exotic gardeners can buy, such as Scheffler or Tetrapanax, it's easy to treat them as pretty much small foliage plants like that Mahonia there. A couple of feet tall, a nice cute little plant for the back or front of a border. But those plants do grow, and in five to 10 years time, they'll be a tall winding stem, well on its way to being a large shrub or even small tree. <laughs> so I think it really is important when you're planting something. Yes, go for your impulse buys, <laughs> there's no problems there. But before you put it in the ground, at least have a rough idea of how tall it's going to grow and how wide it is. So for example, the trachycarpus there, I know that these fronds or leaves, those will get to probably a meter long. So that's gonna be well over here. So that plant needs all this area here to dominate. Again, with that one there, that's gonna to touch this one here and potentially it's not gonna be far off touching the one over there. So it really is important to space the big plants out and you can then be a little bit looser with the ground covers on lower level plants and sort of let everything merge together. So that's my plant for this area here. I hope you like it. Let me know your comments in the section below. But anyway, I'm gonna get on with planting. So I've got half an hour left and the sun really is beautiful. Thanks for watching, bye.